Hello everyone and welcome to this small initiative by point 99. In this video, we are going to have a discussion about the TSD cheat sheet. I divided this entire thing into two parts. So this is the first part of the entire sequence that we are going to cover. So what is it that is present in time speed and distance? By now you should be aware that time speed and distance commands a very high weight when it comes to the QA section of the CAT and also the other entrance tests that you intend to take. On an average, we will see roughly three to four questions that will appear from time speed and distance in an average CAT slot, which basically means roughly 15% of your test comprises or the section comprises of time speed and distance. So what are topics are there in time speed and distance? The first topic is the basic formula and conversions that exist. So we will be covering that in this video, followed by the concept of average speed. There are a couple of shortcuts that are present here that I will be covering later in this particular video. So make sure that you watch this video till the very end. Then there is this concept of relative speed that exists, which we will be covering in this video again. Then there is the concept of linear motion and circular motion along a linear track and a circular track respectively. Then there are the concepts of races that are there, wherein two or more people will start moving along a linear track and they will race each other. And the last part of time speed and distance comprises of escalators, upstream and downstream motion, which we will be looking at in the next part. So to start with the basic formula, we know that whenever we talk about time speed and distance, the formula is speed equals distance upon time. Now we can figure out three relationships because of this one formula. The first relationship is if speed is constant, then distance is directly proportional to time. Meaning that the more time you have, the more distance you are going to cover. The less time you have, the lesser will be the distance that you will be covering. The second relationship that we get is if time is constant, then distance is directly proportional to speed. So basically, if you are going to travel for a same finite amount of time, if you travel at a higher speed, you will go further in terms of the distance. The third relationship, which is the most important one, is this, wherein if the distance is constant, then speed into time will be constant, which basically means that speed will be inversely proportional to time. If the speed increases, then the time taken would go down, which is obvious to cover the same amount of distance. Similarly, if the speed reduces, then you will take more time to cover the same distance. Now, there is this one small thing that you also have to remember in this particular context is the conversion from kilometers per hour to meters per second. So, 1 kilometer per hour will translate into 5 by 18 meters per second and 1 meters per second will convert to 18 by 5 kilometers per hour. In other words, if someone tells you that they are traveling at a speed of 18 kilometers per hour, then you can convert it by multiplying 18 by 5 by 18 and say that they would be traveling at a speed of 5 meters per second. Now, there are a few things that you need to remember in addition to whatever covered on the previous slide. The first thing is distance being constant, what is going to happen? Speed into time will remain the same, which basically means if new speed is a by b times the original speed, then the new time will be b by a times the original time. How does this work? You have to multiply speed and time and you have to keep the product constant. Now, if speed is multiplied by a by b and you want to keep the product constant, you have to multiply the other part by b by a. And that's basically how this will work. Now, there is a very small example for you to make sure that you have understood this concept properly. And I have marked a couple of things in different colors for you to understand that this is where the emphasis lies. So, if the new speed is 15 kilometers per hour and the original speed was 10 kilometers per hour, then what will be the ratio of the two speeds or what can we say about the new speed versus the original speed? New speed will be 3 by 2 times the original speed because 3 by 2 into 10 gives me 15. If new speed is 3 by 2 into original speed, then new time will be 2 by 3 into the original time. Or we can also say that new time will be less than the older time by one third of itself. Which basically means that if let's say for example, the original time taken was 30 minutes, new time taken will be two thirds of that or 20 minutes which basically means that the original time would have reduced by one third of 30 minutes or by 10 minutes. So you have to understand these two phrases very well, two third of the original time and one third less than the original time. So don't get confused between these two phrases. Now we're talking about average speed. 
Average speed is nothing but total distance covered upon total time taken. It is not the average of the individual speeds. It is always total distance covered divided by total time taken. However, if you look at some special cases, you are going to see that if the time taken is the same in multiple parts of the journey, then the average speed will be the arithmetic mean or the average of the individual speeds that exist. The second thing, if the distance covered is the same in multiple parts of a journey, then the average speed is the harmonic mean of the speeds that are there in the individual parts. Now, one question for you, which you can answer in the comment section below. What if the speed is the same in each part of the journey? What will be the average speed then? Answer in the comment section below. Now, we'll move on to relative speed. Relative speed basically happens when there are two objects that are moving together or if one object is trying to overtake the other object or cross another object. This is basically where the relative speed comes into the picture. Now, effective distance, whenever one object is overtaking another object or crossing another object, the effective distance that needs to be covered or gained will be the total length of both the objects. For all practical purposes, poles, people, cars, signals, the length will be equal to zero because they are negligible in terms of length. But for bridges, stations, tunnels and trains, you will always have the length of that particular object that you will have to consider. Effective speed at which the distance is covered is going to be in two parts. The first part is if they are moving in the same direction, then what we will do? We will have the difference between the speeds. Why is that the case? Because one object is moving and another object is also moving in the same direction. So it means that this object has to be faster than this object if it wishes to overtake it. So some effort will be spent in matching this object's speed and then this one will have to move faster than this to overtake it. So if a friend is moving at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour, you will have to drive at a speed of greater than 40 kilometers per hour if you wish to catch up or to overtake your friend. So that is basically how the same direction concept works. In case they are moving in opposite directions, then the relative speed or effective speed at which the distance will be covered will be the sum of the speeds. So if you are moving at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour and your friend is moving at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour and you have to cover a distance of 50 kilometers, you would work on your 20 kilometers independently of your friends working on 30 kilometers independently. And that's how you will be covering 50 kilometers together in one hour. And that's why we sum or we add the two speeds if these people are moving in opposite directions. All these cases are there in front of you in the form of a table. You can have a look at it and try to figure out where is it that you are getting confused. In case there is something in this table that you are not able to figure out, do let me know in the comment section and I will try to resolve your query. Now moving on to the next part which is linear paths. In terms of linear paths, if two people who are traveling in opposite directions from opposite ends of a linear track of length D, once they reach one end point, they will go back to the previous end point. So let's say if they are moving from point A and point B, two people in opposite directions, they will meet each other. Then this person who had started from B will continue his journey towards A and this person who had started from A would continue her journey towards B. And then once they reach A and B, they will again come back and they will keep on traveling back and forth. So this is basically how this entire journey will take place. Now, when they meet for the first time, cumulatively together, they would have covered distance equal to D, which is the length of the track. When they meet for the second time, and you can just draw this and see it for yourself, together they would have covered distance equal to 3D. Now, there is a very small disclaimer that I will add towards the end of this particular slide. So, make sure that you are looking at this slide entirely. When they meet for the third time, together they would have covered distance equal to 5D. And this will keep on continuing till the time they meet for the nth time, wherein together they would have covered distance equals 2n minus 1 times d. So if they are meeting together for the 10th time, they would have covered distance equals 2 into 10, that is 20, minus 1, that is 19 times d. Now all these cases are applicable if the speed of the faster person is less than 2 times the speed of the slower person. 
because of the speed of the faster person is more than twice or equal to twice the speed of the slower person then they will not exactly be moving in opposite directions throughout the journey and because of that they would not be working on different parts of the track simultaneously in some cases that is why it might so happen that before one person completes one round the other person might have already met that person twice so all these things are possible that is why be very careful when it comes to these question types if you have the multiples of speeds being greater than 2 or the faster person is more than twice the speed of the slower person you will have to calculate each meeting point individually and not rely on this formula now the same thing is applicable if two people are moving in the same direction and they start from the same end of the linear track what will happen in this case when they meet for the first time what will happen the faster person would have gone ahead and reached the other end point the slower person person would not have reached the end point and then they will travel back and they will meet together for the first time when they meet for the first time cumulatively together they would have covered distance equal to 2d when they meet for the second time cumulatively they would have covered distance equal to 4d when they meet for the third time they would have covered distance equals 6d and so on till the time when they meet for the nth time they would have covered distance equals 2 into n into d now again this is applicable only when the speed of the faster person is less than two times the speed of the slower person so keep that in mind in terms of shortcuts there are three shortcuts that we have when it comes to linear paths when two people starting from opposite ends with speeds s1 and s2 meet each other and after meeting each other if the first person takes time t1 to reach the other end and the second person takes time t2 to reach the other end then we have these set of formulas that exist the first formula is the total distance obviously they are working on two separate parts after meeting so if the first person is covering this much of the distance for time t1 at speed s1 then that part of the track will be s1 into t1 and the other part of the track will be the one that will be covered by the second person at speed s2 in time t2 and that's why that part of the track will be s2 t2 together the length of the track will be s1 t1 plus s2 t2 the second shortcut the time taken to meet each other is going to be root of t1 into t2 so if someone takes maybe 9 minutes after the meeting point to reach an end point and the other person takes 16 minutes after meeting to reach the other end point then the time taken for them to meet each other will be root of 9 into 16 that is root of 3 into 4 or 12 minutes that's what we have to understand here and the last part is the ratio of the speeds will be equal to the square root of the inverse of the times taken by them to reach the opposite points after meeting so if again the same example that we took earlier if the first person takes 9 minutes to reach the end point after meeting and the second person takes 16 minutes to reach the end point after meeting then the ratio of their speeds is going to be s1 by s2 equals root of t2 by t1 or root of 16 by 9 or 4 is to 3 so that is basically how you use this particular shortcut coming to the last part of the video we are talking about circular paths here in terms of circular paths you have to understand that if two people are starting from the same point moving at speeds s1 and s2 along a circular path of circumference c then what will happen they will meet for the first time after how long they will meet for the first time after c that is the distance divided by the difference between their speeds if they are moving in the same direction so I just put same direction and C upon mod of S1 minus S2 for your reference so that you can look at this quickly and understand what this is about. On the other hand, they will meet for the first time after time C upon S1 plus S2 if they are moving in opposite direction. How will that happen? Both of them are working on different parts of the circular track and when they meet cumulatively they would have covered the circumference or the length of the circular track and the effective speed will be S1 plus S2. So this is basically a shout out from the relative speed concept that we had studied a few minutes ago. In If S1 by S2 is in its simplest form, so if you cancel out some common factors and get it in the form of A by B where A and B are co-prime to each other, the runners will now meet at A plus B points if they travel in opposite directions and they will meet at mod of A minus B points if they travel in the same direction. So just understand how many points will they be meeting at. And the last bit, the runners will meet again at the starting point after time taken which is the LCM of the individual times taken to complete one round. 
So in this case, circumference C divided by S1 will be the amount of time taken by the first runner to complete one cycle of the circular track. Similarly, C by S2 will be the amount of time taken by the second person to complete one round of the circular track. And this is applicable for multiple people and you will see that one thing I have not written here, same direction or opposite direction, it does not matter. Even if people are moving in the same direction, it will be LCM of C by S1, C by S2 and so on. And even if they are moving in the opposite direction, it will still be LCM of C by S1, C by S2 and so on. And why does this happen? You let me know in the comment section below as to why is this C by S1, C by S2 constant even if they are moving in the same direction or in the opposite direction. There is one word of note here in terms of circular paths. You will see that all these three formulas are linked to each other. So whenever they are meeting for the first time, whenever they are meeting again at the origin. So if they are meeting at the uh, meeting for the first time after C1, after C by S1 minus S2 or C by S1 plus S2, after how much time will they meet at the origin or at the starting point? They will meet after covering all the distinct meeting points that are there. So if there are four distinct points, they would meet for the first time, second time, third time, fourth time and that would basically be the origin again. If they are meeting at two points, they will meet for the first time and the second time will be the origin again. So that is basically how it works. So all the three formulas that we have on this particular slide are linked to each other. Now in part two, we will be covering more such concepts related to time, speed and distance. We will be going through races, upstream, downstream and escalators. So these parts we will be covering in part 2 and part 2 will be out soon. If you like this video, consider giving us a thumbs up and do share it with all the people you think would benefit from this. If you have more such suggestions for these kind of videos, do let us know in the comment section and we will try to make these kind of videos for you. And also stay subscribed to the channel so that you get notified about every new video that we are going to come up with.